a three-year trend analysis uh, of, of what we're doing. So property tax, this one's a is is a is a big unknown as we know right now. It's my understanding that that the average property assessment in Lake County, including the city of Leadville, went up like 85% this year. I've talked to people who double, triple, I talked to one person whose property tax quadrupled. Jesus. So that having been <clears throat> said, I think we have a huge problem in terms of the people who have lived here all their lives who paid fifteen thousand dollars for their house, and now it's now it's appraised at you know seven eight hundred thousand dollars. I mean it, it, it's 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 out of control and absurd. So uh, uh, initiative HH, which will be on the the state ballot, uh, is a is a very very convoluted initiative. It it Sorry. has. Proposition, yeah. Okay. It, it? Gotcha. Um, it, uh, it has some, some positives, although the positives aren't defined. They don't define then what the limitations will be against property tax. They don't do that. And on, on, and it, on, the, on the flip side, it unleashes the dogs of paper, <laughs> you know, because it does away with, with table refunds. And they're going to use that part partially to backfill some of the some of the property tax issues mm -hmm. but there are a whole bunch of other things in there that are just very tricky so I, at first i thought i would vote for it and now i'm really struggling with it because i like the basic concept of controlling property tax year over year but they haven't defined how they're going to do that uh and there are parts of this proposition that really create issues in the state so I'll leave it at that. So what I did here as a projection, so what I've been suggesting for some time is we should look at this carefully as a city. We're, we're only one taxing entity, but then we should declare mills based on what we need as a city, not based on 85% increase. And so all I did was plug in inflation here, two years of inflation, which I, I project at 13%. Total. So with regard to this revenue for property tax, a um, couple things. We um, we're going to find out what the uh, estimate is from our assessor. So the mayor is going to set up a meeting with our assessor and uh, me so that we can get the estimate of what the property tax will be based upon the new assessment. That information should be coming out shortly. So that is what the mayor is saying. We've heard, you know, property tax uh, could go up by 60%. So what we've done with this is, you know, the mayor's just based it on 13% inflation. Once we get the data from the assessor, we can make some decisions because Prop HH is going to be voted on before you'll vote on this budget. Mm -hmm. So we will know whether or not Prop HH is going to take effect before this you vote on this budget. So for right now as a placeholder, we're going to say 13% inflation. If the assessor gives us the data and it's actually property taxes are going up well over 13%, then we can make some decisions after we see what happens with Prop HH. One of the things that we can do that we've talked about, um, uh, Lake County Build a Generation had an intern, uh, attorney intern who helped us with some research about ways that you can do property tax relief. And um, we feel the, the best approach for the city, given our amount of staffing and ability to implement would be just a reduction in the mills. Mm -hmm. So what would happen is we, we put this placeholder in here at 13% inflation. So we know what our revenue is from property tax. Then we see what happens with property HH. If it passes, then we can decide what we need to do. If it doesn't pass, you know, then there's the option of reducing the mills. We don't certify the mills until uh, December 15th. It's also the 15th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll pass the budget and certify the mills at the same time. So what we have said in this budget right now, you'll see property tax, I mean, at a $5 million budget, it's, you know, about $906,000. It isn't our, you know, bread and butter, but it is important. So some cities are doing two different budgets. Some cities are more tied to property tax. Uh, we felt this approach is the best approach for now so that we can get a handle on what our revenues are. And uh, we're not putting in a 60% increase because I think regardless of Proposition HH, we need to provide some sense, some sense of property tax relief. So yeah. that's where we came.
I guess my worry with that, not so much from the homeowner perspective, but just from the renter perspective, where that could be a little bit problematic. I know that a lot of landlords tend to carry on that tax. Mm -hmm. um, pretty common thing to use. Um, I just don't know that the renters would see that direct assistance. And obviously, it sounds like it's what we can do best, but in lack of any, you know, and maybe this isn't attached to the using property tax to relieve property tax, and maybe this is more attached to rental relief, and we can get to it at some other point, but that seems to be like the missing puzzle piece for me, considering that, you know, over um, getting close to 50% of our units aren't owned by their primary residents, so. You're exactly right. <clears throat> If we provided property tax relief, there's no guarantee that would be passed along to the residents. Yeah. And that that seems like a given our current community home ownership rates, it seems like a concern to me. Um that said, I totally understand that the community that does own their homes does definitely need this. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm opposed to it by any means, just how can we help? alleviate the renters as well i don't think we can i mean well you know the answer unfortunately it all depends on what the property owners decide to charge for rent. so it and it, it, it can be well in in an indirect way if your analysis of landlord's behavior is correct in that if there is a gigantic increase they pass it along to their renters by providing a property tax relief, we are providing some relief to the renters in that that would not be passed along to them and, and substantially. In an ideal world, but we've right. also seen them abuse it and say, well, right. whatever. We're doing what we can. We're yeah. pulling what lever we can with this budget. Sure. Okay. Um, a specific ownership tax, no reason to change that as far as I can tell. Uh, sales tax. We're right now about four hundred thousand dollars ahead of of last year ahead of budget, and I project based on on trends that we'll be about six hundred thousand dollars ahead by the end of the year. So I took four hundred thousand of that and put it in the budget. I didn't want to take it all, uh, just from a conservative standpoint, to leave some breathing room if, if taxes contract next year because we never really know. So I, I wanted to leave some. Uh, the fudge factor in there uh, for taxation in 2024. I hope the trend continues, but next. Well, and it has, you know, it has continued. The, the <clears throat> end, end result is that, yeah, I think the mayor and project projections for sales tax revenue for last year, how much we were going to be able to, was pretty much spot on. And, you know, with this, the $200,000 remain in our reserves, which, as you know, are quite healthy. They're, you know, 3.8 through uh, 4, 4 million with a recommended reserve of 2 million. So uh, I think the mayor's numbers are more than fair to say putting 400,000 in the 2024 budget is, I think, reasonable. Um, next is Marijuana City Excise Tax. We know. Uh, we just did a settlement of $30,000. As you guys know, you had to approve it. Uh, so that'll bump up the, the year to 50000 which was what our projection. But that particular uh, business says they're not going to be doing transfers <coughs> again next year. So uh, we can't project their $30,000. And uh, so we, I, I dropped it to 20000 knowing what we know. And they had curtailed their business even before the settlement. So I think that was just their... The handwriting was kind of on the wall. Mm -hmm. Next one, severance tax. Boy, is this a crapshoot. You see that in 2021, we did $44,000. Mm -hmm. Then in 2022, $219,000. This year, we had budgeted $80,000, and then we got $399,000. So I reached out to the Department of Revenue. Uh, that was a, quite the process to get to the, <laughs> to the person I finally ended up talking to they still don't have a projection. Um, and so I said, okay, just, I don't know what to put in. I honestly don't. And, and, and the frustrating part about it is what we wanted to know. I mean, yes, they know they can't 
reject it always. What we wanted to know is why did it go up so much? Yeah. What What is the factor that we can maybe look at economic, economic factors and say, well, maybe that was an anomaly or maybe that won't happen again. Mm-hmm. They couldn't tell us. So we, we think perhaps we haven't found the expert who can tell us that, but mm-hmm. as the mayor's right, this is this is a, a number without information behind it, and that's frustrating to us. There's a ton of information on the Department of Revenue's website about how to pay your tax, <laughs> mm-hmm. but not so much on how to receive it. And what it is, we don't even know exactly what industry, I mean, we know what industries is comprised of, but we don't know if there's a particular extraction facility that we had a banner year that caused this gigantic spike that yeah. now they're offline. We, we don't know. And we have not been able, just so you know, we've tried to get that information. The mayor has and, and um, was not able to. She was, she was very nice. She was just, she didn't know. <laughs> she, she couldn't, she was non-committal. Okay. Next one, franchise tax. We're trending up on franchise tax. We have been for a couple of years. We're at 101,000 through two thirds of the year. So I just projected at 150,000. Um, we did 180,000, you know, last year. So uh, hard to know what the real number is. Uh, uh, penalties and, and delinquent tax, uh, that's turning up slightly. Um, business licenses are about the same. Um, liquor licenses. No real difference. Oh, you skipped over um, building permits. Oh, there it is, building permits. Yeah, I think you want. Oh, to yeah, that. I do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I build, you. Building <laughs> permits. We currently don't collect building permits. Uh, you know, the county does that because the building department is with the county. Uh, we, in our budget, you'll see that we are we are proposing to bring the building department back in house, but we don't think we can do that until the, by the early second quarter. Because of that, uh, this eighty-four thousand dollars is about three quarters of the um, building permits that were collected last year, which I think was one hundred twenty-four thousand. And so we went ahead and, and put that number in as an expectation. I actually think it would probably be more than that, but again, I'm fairly conservative in my approach to the budget. And that's without raising any per- building permit fees. That is true. Does the county have an opinion about that since I, they've been doing all the building permits? I'll be, I'm, yes, they do. And I'll be meeting with the, the county. Uh, at the first meeting to discuss this. I've already had one. Uh, second meeting is in a week. But you have already mentioned it, Dan, that we're yes, thinking of going and, down the road. And, and, uh, I, I have to have multiple evaluation meetings with the county. Yes. So this it'll be a, it'll be an evaluation and implementation process. And, okay. and that would be then in your, under your purview. Yeah, part part of this would be um, yes, but we would need to have um, hire a staff person or consult these services out, like the county is already doing. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Marijuana application fee, really no change. We have five five marijuana businesses. We don't anticipate any more. Uh, retail marijuana tax uh, that comes from the state. It's trending down, uh, so I put it in at fifty five thousand dollars. Um, excavation. Short term um, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, on the excavation. Uh, so, yeah, based on previous, yeah. So the that's in part the number of excavations is higher because of that Excel Energy gas line project upgrade. So you will see that when Excel finishes that project, drop off a little bit. But their project continues for about another two years. <laughs> Yeah, that was really a five-year plan. Now it's a six-year plan. So, you know, we got a couple years left. Oh, and that's in part because we didn't want as many crews all summer long. All summer long. Yes. It, it, we just mm-hmm. had to reduce the number of crews and kind of extend the time to split the baby. They also mm-hmm. fell, down, fell behind. They just couldn't keep up with their own schedule. Yeah. Uh, next one, short-term rental fees. All I did was round up uh, to $57,000. I don't see, I don't anticipate any change. If we lower the amount, well, I guess for the time being, that 2024 budget would remain. Never mind. If we were to lower it, it wouldn't impact this 2024 season since we'd be doing a sunset um, if we agree to lowering the number of units from 171. Well, that's to... actually a pretty good point. I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, we may have to look at that. Yeah. 
if you know but i can't worry about that until it happens right and it's a minimum amount anyways so i think that's it would just fair. be true attrition right so yeah, you yeah see the exactly issues. that is true that's kind of what Good i was point. thinking yeah. was, it probably wouldn't uh, a couple point. things here that really didn't change if you have any questions please ask me my next thing is annual shelter fees uh we're seeing a downward trend there um i dropped it by five thousand uh, dollars hard to know what what the actuality is there the next one animal shelter that's 50 percent, and the animal shelter budget that they've given us is pretty high i mean it 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 went up significantly so those are decisions internally we're going to have to make so that number varies depending on what we finally decide their budget is going to be but right now it's a 160,000 showing their total budget of 320,000 whereas last year was 260,000 so that's that that number will move depending on what we decide on their budget um motor vehicle no real change there uh, state highway maintenance the same every year. Uh, highway users tax. Uh, um, uh, CML has given us a a, a, a projection of one hundred twenty-two thousand, like one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred twenty-four, or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's not based on our estimates. It's based on what we're getting. What they what they told us it's going to be. So we don't have to guess on that one. Uh, Please surcharge. I've dropped it. Um, we're hoping that in the future, there's several things, and you'll hear from the judge in terms of community court uh, fees as well, that we're hoping those will go up as, as we we hope we see more focused by our police force in terms of, of uh, enforcement and, and writing um, cases into municipal court instead of county court. But that's a different subject. Uh, court fees actually, we had, and this is a conversation that Lori and I had, we have about $5,400 sitting um, in the account and it has its own separate account. And I'm projecting we'll add about $1,500 to that. So that's where the 6961 came from $1,000. And why do we have that money sitting in the account? We just haven't spent we the budget. Haven't ever, haven't ever spent it, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Judge Blaine, I hope you heard that. We made, we're making sure that it gets to you. Yeah, I was looking for that on my graph. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Traffic fines clearly are way down. I wasn't quite sure whether to project something more aggressive than that. I dropped it to $500. Um, we'll see what happens in 2024. Uh, other fines tracking approximately the same. Uh, warrant fees, we just took them out. Nothing's happened with warrant fees for three years. Uh, earnings on deposit, uh, we've seen some a little bit of positive in terms of operating account. Everything else has paid about the same. Uh, miscellaneous, no reason to change that. Uh, reimbursements to the EV charging station, it just isn't being used as much as we expected. Uh, so we have less cost, but we also have less revenue. So I dropped the revenue to 10,000 based on, on uh, and I think for part of that last year, we had some problems with a charging station, charging in Colorado really, uh, or yeah, it yeah. just, it just didn't work. And then someone broke one of the prongs on one of the, the outlets and it, it took forever to get that fixed. So I can't tell exactly where we're going with that, but, but it, it's been, I'd say the usage has been disappointing and part of it has been the reliability of that charging station. We hear anecdotally nationwide where people try and take tri trips in electric vehicles and they get to a station that has like eight charging stations and all of them are inoperable. You know, so it's a, it's a real problem. Uh, Spruce Street House, I dropped that considerably uh, this year. We, we just don't have that many people in there. Uh, we now have a management company, so I'm hoping I gotta get me to sign that. Well, we have a new tenant in the um, building, so we now have <clears throat> uh, additional income. Well, it hits the five thousand because we only have seventy four hundred year to date. So yeah. I will say, as a discussion, uh, Jack and I had this morning, we discussed uh, potentially bringing up the idea of uh, the regional housing authority 
having an in-home or a regional housing authority like manager, a property manager, uh, just given the county situation and our situation. Uh, so that could be a potential future thing that might impact the 2024 budget. Well, it should, and I hope it does, <clears throat> yeah. but I can't project that right now. Right. Just a heads up. Yeah, uh, thank understand. you. No, that's great. Great to know. Uh, reimbursements are down. Um, uh, contract services. Um, that, that Those are reimbursements. We don't have any in the pipeline, so I just zeroed it out. Uh, consultant fee reimbursement, uh, again, nothing that we know of was happening in terms of, of, of those reimbursements, so no reason to leave it in there. Um, Tabor Home Revenue, um, we did about 2,500, and House with the Eye also about 2,500. That's that's kind of what we project for revenue. That's a donation-based uh, system, but it seems to be working okay. Uh, but I don't consider those profit centers anyway. They're, they're, they're you know, they're museums. They're, they're, they're going to operate at a loss. Uh, city Administrator Grant drops, you know, we, we've got uh, uh, 75 percent the first year, 50 percent the second year, and the third year then goes to 25 percent. And then the fourth year, nothing. But that was the way that grant was structured from Dola. Um, animal Shelter, uh, Tabor Opera House Recreation Grants, I have no idea where they are with, with the new grants that they've applied for with DOLA. In fact, they're, uh, I think they're, they're meeting with DOLA on Thursday uh, to, to, to make their, their pitch for the latest grant request. But it really doesn't matter. Those, those aren't real revenue numbers anyway. They're strictly, we're strictly a pass-through organization and it's not, it's not revenue that benefits us in any way other than that it really helps the Tabor Opera House. Well, same thing is true for this next one, the Department of Justice grant. Uh, we've expended that grant as far as I know. Uh, regardless, it's, it's uh, we don't have any more grants in the pipeline that I know of. And that one was, uh, I believe that was for the dash cams. Um, but it's not in next year's budget. And again, it's irrelevant because uh, if there is a number that plugs in there, it's just passed through money. Uh, administrative fee for the fire fund, $28,000. Um, we get that each year. Uh, and the others are... So here's what you need to know is this bottom line for 2023 is $5,197,744. It's not the $5,830,000 because you back out uh, these big grants. You have to take them out. They're not really revenue in our budget. <clears throat> and so the delta between the 2024 budget and the 2023 budget is $681,000. In other words, we've added $681,964. Basically what we have to spend over and above last year's budget as of, as of right this second. Mayor, so those... did you mention the accommodations tax? Did I miss that? Well, the accommodations tax, I did not mention that, um, but okay. that we don't derive any, that's strictly uh, its own vehicle where money comes into the accommodations tax and goes out of the accommodations tax. None of it benefits the city directly. In other words, 70,000 of it goes to the, um, uh, the director of the regional housing authority. Uh, we've projected about $7,000 goes to housing, although we think it'll probably be more than that this year. Um, and tourism panels share. Oh yeah, the tourism panels share 1.92%. That's true. And then for next year, we, in our IGA, we agreed to have that continue um, until next year, and then we'll review it next year. Um, to see well, if that well that's fine two a's yeah. in perpetuity so yeah yeah um i don't know why we wouldn't count on that money for the housing of course uh and the tourism panel going forward yeah we just don't know what the amounts will be i think accommodations tax has its own 
set of numbers inside the budget, Tracy? So, no, no, no. Yeah, it's not it's not revenue to our general fund. Yeah, right. Okay, that's revenue. Any any questions, any thoughts about I mean, some of these things are approximations, some of them are iffy propositions. I understand that. Um good job. Yeah, I mean, I I it's always great to deliver good news. These revenue project projections are up. And um, everything is, uh, other than some minor line items, uh, you know, our major revenues are. Did you get a copy of this? So it's, you got to, yeah, it's nice to be able to bring good news mm -hmm. because obviously we have to present you a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. So with revenues being up, it's it's easier for us to grant some of the requests that you've heard, you know, from the departments with their goals. So. Uh, Oh, did you cover what percent increase you're projecting for the overall budget? Uh, approximately twelve percent, but that that includes the uh, the building department, which is actually the costs are going to be greater than yeah. than the revenue, at least in the first year. Um, we'll we'll look at that when we look at uh, the planning department's budget. Okay. But we'll keep in mind that eighty four thousand dollars as you look at those numbers, uh, and, and sometimes even though Dola doesn't care when you balance your budget, Dola doesn't care about the revenue side. They only care about the expense side, uh, and so you always have to keep in your mind: okay, are there offsets to this in our mind? You know that help us uh, uh, make decisions about what what costs we will bear in any given department. Okay, uh, next up we have the municipal court. Judge Floyd. You can pick a spot right here. Pick a spot, any spot. Um, I'm so glad to hear Hang on, I, I need to hand these, these out there, buddy. Okay. These are pages four and five of the budget. So I'm very happy to hear that revenues are up because I'm here tonight to ask to spend a little bit more of it um, than what is in the draft budget. Um, and some of this flows from conversations that we had and have been having over the last couple of weeks yeah. about port security. I'm glad to hear about that. I will tell you the revenues are up. There's no way we balance this budget on these numbers. I, I it's understand. just not going to happen. I understand. So just just a well, cautionary tale. When, when I met with Mayor Lobby to talk about um, my budget for 2024, he did mention at that time that what I requested was modest. So I, it, it I, is modest, yes. I plan to stay somewhat modest, but I think we'll see I've, about that. I, I've, I've done a lot of um, research and I've had a lot of conversations with some of my peers and other courts over the last week or so. And I think that it it makes sense to perhaps add a little more money to the municipal court's budget to address some security issues. Um, and the reason for that is in talking with Chief Chavez, the um, you know, there may be times when officers aren't available to provide court security. And I will share with you that in talking with all of my peers, especially ones in the small rural courts, without exception, they do all have some form of security and most of them do have a police officer or a security service that is present during- do we have a security policy. service available to us? The county uses one when they're shorthanded. So I'm sure we could Where contact them all over. Okay, I mean, they, all right, there I'm aren't just curious. This, there aren't any in this town that right, I'm right. with, but yeah, they've been using um, a couple of different services over the last year when they were shooting. Well, you know how important I think this is, so. Well, and so here's my, my request, my suggestion, if you will, in order to make sure that we have some sort of stop gap in the event that there isn't a level of police officer available. Um, in 2022, I noticed that somehow my court managed to spend $1,643 on professional services. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know what that was for. <laughs> So um, it, you know, it, there hasn't been any money 
um, allocated to the court for professional services. It seems to me that typically that would be, you know, where Do I you would want think. You want to put $1,643 in there? Well, I was going to modestly ask for $1,500 um, overall, oh. but okay. with, that's with the caveat that I also would like to have money for professional services to cover an associate municipal judge to have backup appointed. I haven't missed any court dates, and I've always shown up, regardless of what time, day or night. They say, hey, we picked up so-and-so on a bench warrant, and I'm on my way. But life happens, and just out of an abundance of caution. Um, I understand that um, Ron Carlson will not be proceeding as the city prosecutor. He is a municipal judge in a half a dozen different um, jurisdictions sure. in the area. And so I would like to to have him appointed as the associate municipal judge's backup. And one of the reasons for that, typically it's been the county court judge. But for some reason, when Jonathan Seamus was promoted to the district court, um, Judge Dunkelman, who's the chief judge of the fifth judicial district, is not amenable to um, County Court Judge Scott filling in as a backup for me. Okay. And so, and we haven't had to pay for that in the past. That's we unfortunate. I think it's un unfortunate for John Scott as well. But yes. that's just yeah. Thing. But that's what yeah. okay. it could be because he's new and he didn't have experience as a judge before he went on the bench and stuff. So part of it would be, you know, I'm asking for fifteen hundred dollars for in the the event I don't anticipate, but in the event that there isn't a police officer available. Okay. So do you have any idea what the county's Paying for a court session to have security. I can, I can tell you if you give me two seconds. I will. Know. I'd like but to know. Yeah. yeah, because they do. Like I said, they have a couple of different contracts with security providers, which of course I have access to their contracts because of course you do. I, I review those. <laughs> um, so bear with me one minute as I get to that real quick just that fifteen hundred dollars doesn't seem like very much it, it isn't but it's also you know i'm sensitive to the notion of not wanting to ask for things and as you'll see with this draft budget there are a number of things that the mayor and i agreed not to ask for anymore in my budget because either it's absorbed pulled together with other you know um city hall supplies and that type of thing and if we haven't spent it you know i don't want to just ask for money for the sake of asking for money so i think there are a couple of areas where we have taken money out of the budget so perhaps <laughs> this is a request to somewhat redirect that but let me bear with me one second as i find yeah while you're doing it we can yeah please go ahead dana sorry hi thanks i i'm just wondering how much notice do we know if there will not be a Leadville police officer available to fill in? Like, is there going to be enough time to en engage a security service? That could be an issue. Yes, it, it absolutely could be an issue. But my anticipation would be if based on scheduled staffing, Chief Chavez comes to me and says, hey, it looks like I'm not going to have an officer for you for your docket day. This would give me the opportunity to try to... Um, to get somebody up here and let's see here let's yeah see. so to your point data that feels pretty iffy but it's better than nothing i guess at least so, to make some plan i didn't bring anybody got a calculator i can tell you real quick. <laughs> so one security officer for the county under the contract they had last year when um when they were short staffed, it was nineteen hundred dollars per week. So divided by forty, it should be forty seven dollars and fifty cents an hour, which is actually really reasonable. And to do it, do they charge travel time? That is, yeah, that is. So, so that might be for two hundred bucks a pop, do, depending on where they come from. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm assuming an hour. Yeah, that's that may not be correct. So, and, and that's yeah, the, I was going to say, I know we've had a couple of them and I was trying to look and see who else real quick. Um, Citadel. So I'm going to take that back. We're going to say $300 a pop. If they're coming out of the front range, I don't know. If they come out they, of stomach so county, it's there's less of a The problem. one that they use, that the sheriff's office used, um, in addition to the first one I talked about, charged $40 an hour. And then plus um, mileage. Oh, okay. So, so it'd be forty dollars both for their court time and for their travel. Can you time. tell by looking at where they were based out of? Um, 
well, this is this was a franchise uh, group, and so I'm trying to see if it says where they would come from. Right here. What's the federal mileage rate now? Fifty-five cents, I think, a mile. Is the yeah, I was gonna say. So I think it's like fifty. I think it is fifty-five cents a mile because that was one of the other things I was going to explain why I asked for an increase in travel and such too. Because this past weekend, since it was a oh, wreck, I drove back and forth um, instead yeah, of getting lodging. Well, I, oh, we are. Is it going up? Yes, it is. Per diem rates for twenty twenty three sixty five point five. Oh, good grief! Wow. Okay, seven cent increase from the twenty twenty rate of fifty eight point five cents. Yeah. Okay. So, but I, I know that they're, you know, they under this was 56 cents per mile for And that's that's the other thing too with these companies. You can negotiate what you're going to pay in terms of for the mileage stuff. But I'm happy to take more money. Right. I, I just like <laughs> to know what the mileage, where they're coming from. Right. So we can at least project well, that's what, what does I'm that like mean? Trying to find, I've got their contract. And that's what I was trying to see if they, I didn't get their proposal that, that said where they were coming from. So, um, but anyway, I, I don't anticipate it. It'll be routinely needed. But I would just like to have the, the flexibility in there in the event that we do need to, to call someone. And then for the associate municipal judge, I kind of just looked at what we what I've been paid per hour and to project out an hourly rate um, for. And, and when I say what I've been paid per hour, for those of you who aren't familiar, my salary is paid is my stub says I'm paid based on four, four hours, which. Yes is not even close that's okay. what that might be what i spend the actual time here on docket day but throughout the rest of the month time it's definitely more than that but in terms of to make it you know, worthwhile are you making minimum time. wage that's all i need to know uh, well I, I think i'm making minimum but also in salary exempt so i don't think the minimum wage rules apply to me <laughs> i think they do but so, um, but anyway, so, so so that's I'm here to ask for an additional fifteen hundred dollars in the budget for professional services and the and the need so that we need. In in the event we have to have a, an associate judge uh fill in, what is that amount? Well, and that's why I was looking if it did it by an hourly rate based on my hourly rate, if you will. It's three it comes out to three hundred and thirty dollars an hour based on this year's budget, what I've been paid. Three hundred and thirty dollars an hour for that four hours. So that would be three hundred and thirty dollars an hour. If it's based on four hours, but oh, if you I actually do saying. it based on okay. the other, and I guess what we have been paying the prosecutor you could also liken it to that is you know seven fifty. Mm -hmm. um, let's just do that, and let's. So that's one hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Because uh, that's what. What do you think? Is. Do you think stuff. that's a fair fair rate to bring in a judge? I, well, yeah, I, I, I mean, would you like to project one time during the year or two times during the year? Uh, well, I'd like to say none, but this is just I an think event two. two, just in case. I know years will be none. Well, let's, well let's, yeah, let's, let's budget if, two. Okay, so if we do that, um, and then because it also has to do with not just the docket, because I always I can schedule around my docket day for everything else, so I don't have there's not a risk of me missing my docket day unless. You know, I get hit walking into the building or get sick or whatever. But I'm more concerned about also backup for um, other things such as responding to arrest on bench warrants because the state law is such that they have to be heard. You know, they they have to come before you within 48 hours. And if I happen to be prey on a beach in Mexico at some point, <laughs> okay. So so if if we hire Ron Carlson to be that person. Is he going to come to Leadville yep. for a bench warrant? He, yeah. And he if says he does, he is that seven hundred fifty dollars? Well, and it not it would be travel time, so it's about he, he lives in Summit County, so he said, right. you know, forty five minutes each yeah. way, an hour and a half of travel time plus plus thirty an minutes hour. for the well, you know, thirty minutes for to advise the person on the bench warrant. So it would be so. minimum of two hours. So that ends up three hundred seventy five dollars. Each time that might happen. If that happens, yeah. Okay, so let's let's say one time he has to cover for you and one time he has to 
to come in for a bench warrant. We just don't have much of that. How many bench warrants have you had to show up for in the last year? Uh, well, there have been at least three, um, two of which were the same person. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, I, think we, I, mean, I, think, I think we have enough to, to ballpark it, don't you think? The, the other thing, too, is one thing I'll say is, is I know that when you and I have talked about the budget and your perspective of the budget, and I'll, I'll pretend like I'm an elected official over at the county right now and say, is all that counts is my bottom line. <laughs> so that if I stay within my bottom line of my budget, is that really what the focus is? So that if, God forbid, something happens and I need to miss a full day or a couple of different bench warrants or something, there's the flexibility. We to don't move really money treat around. the budget like that. So yes, there's always the flexibility to move money around. Uh, I would say this: I'm going to I'm going to propose twelve hundred dollars for security, and I'm going to propose fifteen hundred dollars, which might be one, two bench warrants and one coverage on court day. So twenty seven hundred dollars. Is that? I'm thrilled to have more money. I'm to, I, you know, I come. Well, then we got fifteen hundred for professional services. Well, well that's, that's I would that's put them all. I would yeah. put them in the professional services. So we're not, talking about twenty seven hundred dollars for professional services, which will include. Uh, well, I just want to see how we can cost the people. Twenty seven hundred dollars. <laughs> I, I, no, it's not. We have Brad around somewhere. <laughs> well, and you obviously have my commitment to try to do my best to make sure that it's not spent. Uh, okay. So. What else? What else do you have on your budget that you'd like to revisit? Well, I, the only other thing I was going to ask is that part of the discussion about security are are things we can do to you know kind of low hanging fruit. One of the things I've been talking to Chief Chavez about that all the other courts seem to do is have a sign similar to this posted on the front door that says you can't bring these things into the court. And one of the reasons for having something like this, and we can either put it under his or I can do. It, the other municipal court judges I've talked to, they do an order. They do a procedural order that just says, and you post it on the front okay. door. So um, to cut to the chase on that, you can absolutely do that. We had the question of whether or not the city can post on the front door, no weapons are allowed in the building. We would have to have an ordinance to do that because in order for us to enforce it, we have to have, but let me finish. No, no. We would have to have something by law to enforce However, if you put that on your courtroom door, yeah. you can enforce that with sanctions or your own court order. Mm -hmm. So that actually cuts to the chase and makes it a little quicker than us having to That's pass That's what I thought. It, well, and also yes. too, because I, I had said, well, why, let's go on and do this. That seems low hanging fruit to me. Yeah. And the county does it. And I'm not aware of any resolution or ordinance by the county. So, to, to, so. Well, absolutely. Because the enforceability of it was the problem for us. Right. We needed an ordinance. Okay. The, to put it on the front door. But if it's your courtroom and you put that on your courtroom door and someone comes in with a weapon, you can have them removed or you can sanction you them. Well, and it, I want to post it front. before they wand the person. Yeah. Well, and I'd like to put it because we've also done, usually when I issue orders regarding the court, we actually put it on the front door. So, and especially like during COVID and stuff when we were right. like COVID okay. protocols. As and long stuff. as it says they're not allowed to courtroom not in the entire building yeah. because we, we can't enforce the entire building does that make sense without an ordinance i i hear you i'm i'm not my concern would be the courtroom is in the building i understand so to say that it's just in the municipal court i'm afraid could end up in a situation where somebody's walk walks in and they get wanded and they're in and they're like I'm not in the courtroom yet, and they have, you know, a weapon or some other illegal thing. Well, here's the thing is, I'm just going to tell you, we, we can ask them to leave, but I'm telling you that we have advice from our attorney that without an ordinance, we cannot enforce it. We don't have an ordinance. It's on the list of things, the thousand things that need to come up on a future agenda, but you can put that on the courtroom door, and you could put it on the court door saying they're not allowed in the courtroom, because you can enforce that in your own courtroom. I don't have the ability to force enforce that in the city. So, right. Can we expand the definition definition right. of courtroom? Well, well that's what I was going to say the because in terms the, of when the court is in session, yes, then anybody coming to this building is is uh, is uh, presumed to have access to the court. 
And and one of the reasons for that too is we've often used this room. Like yeah. if we have somebody who's witnesses, unable to do well, not only witnesses, but they can't do the steps and oh, we're right. not able to get them in through the ADA exit or something like yeah. that. We can't get them upstairs to the courtroom, then yeah. I I would like to be fair out a way to put it in order to where it's yeah. any of the any I'm of the building usability. So if we yeah. think it's and I do not want to put anything up that we think that we can't enforce, but yeah. if we if we think there's an argument for that. Hey, I'm willing to take that for us versus not have it on. Dana, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Just my caveat is I'm not a lawyer, but <laughs> if a- You're better for that. A, 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 what, I don't see the problem necessarily with tackling an ordinance for that because sometimes rules are put up less for enforcement and more for packing on additional charges if someone should be um if someone should break that and then cause a problem you know like they came in they knew they weren't supposed to bring a weapon they ended up causing a problem then law enforcement got involved and so then you have the additional charge of bringing a weapon in to the city hall when you knew you were not supposed to so to me it seems a lot like the like the traction law like nobody enforces whether or not you have snow tires it only becomes an issue if then you cause a wreck or an in a wreck and they in retrospect say hey you weren't wearing snow tires here's an additional fine or an additional charge okay um I don't think I have a problem with this. Uh, that, that's a conversation. If we can uh, maybe start with the order, and then if y'all have time, it's on your list to do an ordinance for the overall building. Yeah. But at least if we could get okay. something, I'd like to get something posted sooner than later on that. <clears throat> Any other costs in your budget? Well, and I'm sorry, the chief isn't here because I was going to say, I know we don't own a one. And so well, I haven't heard a price on that, but we'll, we'll put that in the yes. police department. Budget. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. If that's something that needs to be purchased through my budget, I was going to ask. I don't think so. Headed. Um, it other, doesn't matter six and one half dozen. And I didn't know it's their he, tool. Yeah, if he had any request for the court to pay towards the cost of having an officer there yeah, as the court marshal. That wasn't requested. Hey, do you have you gotten a cost on a wand, uh, Chief? Okay, all right. And I was just asking whether you needed me to allocate any cost in my budget towards having an officer on station during you know, the court session. I would think that would be prudent. Yeah. So that essentially what it does is during that time period, it turns that officer into a court marshal, if you will, so that they're the marshal for the court. When well, what difference does it make whether the police department pays for it or you pay for it? It doesn't make any difference to me personally, but if it's if you want to accurately reflect the cost of operating in the municipal court, it's probably fair to the police department to say this we allocate this. Well, I would say that, that creates a payroll administrative. Oh, I don't want issue. it to become my employee for sure. No, I, I get it. But if, be... if you start sharing costs, then okay. then that breakdown becomes a problem. We already have that problem with, with some other things. Okay. I'd rather not add to that burden, well. especially with a new finance manager right now. Okay. That's well, and maybe that's something you build into your budget to say an allocation of a certain number of hours per year for an officer to serve as the court manager. So what if that's if that works for y'all? That would, that would work if he has enough officers to do it. Yeah, well, and that's why the other, and just so you'll know, I've, I've asked for an allocation of budget <clears throat> funds to hire private security in the event that your officers are not available. And we know that in advance. And my thought would be if we don't know that in advance and we feel there's a risk, we will not open the court. I think so we have, well, that, that's a good point. Well, I, I think we have money for that to happen about four times a year, okay. four of the 12, okay. as an example. Okay. Um, other than that, the only other thing, the increase, I'm happy to ask, answer any questions you have about like the the travel conferences and stuff like that. I think it's important for my court clerk, Hannah, to have the opportunity to continue her education and learning as to proper procedures and stuff. The court laws are changing. There's a lot that's going to be going on in the General Assembly this year related to municipal court operations. So. I need to change my notes to reflect our conversation. Uh, that you expect uh, we'll need more education for the court clerk yeah. and that you uh, will also, you know, be attending conferences. I will. And in the past, I'll just, you know, in the past, any of you have been around know I didn't do this for the money, but in the past, when I was in Good private day. practice, I was subsidizing 
as the mayor's often done too personally, the cost of me attending these conferences and stuff. And so while I'm not unhappy to continue doing that, I would appreciate the support of not being happy to do it. So, so the final ask on that is twenty six hundred. Is that? I think that's what it is. For travel, to. then we increase to a thousand for education. For conference. education to go because the both the Kampka, Colorado okay. Associated okay. Municipal Court Administrators that's or something the, like that. Your additional ask, is and, right? Kampka and then the Colorado Municipal Judge Association. They both have trainings at least. Well, we have two conferences for the judges per year, and then I think Kampka does two trainings per year. And I, I think there's something the, the Newport one so far. Okay. They have a mini conference this year in the world of the Okay. So well that's just in case if there's like two okay. you know, it's just if we agree I'm gonna increase, I'm going to add in special services, which we had zeroed out. Right. Actually they've been zeroed out forever. And uh, so, well, and I'd love office. to know if somebody tell me what that sixteen hundred forty three dollars. I can look it up in for the you. Past, I'm just curious, but it, that's it, fine. It'll be in, in the uh, you just you just look it up by by the account number in the budget, and they'll tell us. And and so yeah, but other than that, I'm happy to answer questions. Otherwise, I'll let y'all get on to your evenings. And All right. The last Any time. questions for the judge? Okay. okay. And so I'm going to put this one in order. From the court, um, Chief Chavez, we talked about that while you weren't in in here with us. I'm going to create an order, and Lori's got it on her wish list for an ordinance to be able to do it for the building overall. And if it's helpful, I'm happy to find out, you know, with the other municipal courts, how you know if they because some of them are just adopting the city's security policy that they already have. And maybe that'd be helpful to see if it, if the other cities have done it by policy instead of ordinance or whatever. It's I, I have legal advice that I need to do it by ordinance. Okay. So I lately I think I this is one I'll, I'll that's and, fine. And besides, we don't have a security policy, so well that's what I say. But it sometimes it's easier to adopt policy than an ordinance. I hundred percent agree with you. Because you can change the policy life. anytime that's you want. That's right. Policies are living things. Okay, great. Thank all you right. very thank much. Thank you all Judge. for the time and the consideration. Thank you. Thank and for giving me more money than I asked for. <laughs> I don't know, Tim. Tim's got a problem. <laughs> I mean, way red shirt. You're going to need to blow this is over. <laughs> okay, the next thing is uh, we're going to talk about the kind of the capital uh, needs that we're considering. Um, and we'll go over those for the people mm -hmm. on on uh, Zoom. Uh, street department, we're asking for. Can I can I oh, explain yeah, why 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 we do this exercise? So, as you go through each department's budget, you're going to see things. You're going to see requests. Uh, the reason we do this capital prioritization list is so that, as the mayor said, this. This is a very, uh, there's a lot of requests in the budget. So if we have to get to the point where we're zeroing out something, we say we can't afford this this year. This helps us with the big capital expenditures. This helps us prioritize what we, the city council thinks might be a better priority. Which ones should we bump up? Which ones might not actually happen in 2024? So the reason that's the reason we do this. And these are not going to be a separate thing. They'll be in each department's budget. If we can find enough money to do it, and that's why we just take a moment and add a prior to what we're going to put in the budgets. So with that, we are starting. So there, there aren't capital improvements for all budgets, right? So there's no, uh, there's no capital improvement request for climbing, for example. There's that's just staffing. But we, Mayor and I, this morning went over what departments have capital requests, and he uh, prepared this so we could talk about it. Street department vacuum unit, they they really do need this, but uh, it's two hundred thousand dollars. But we we've been doing five year leases on on most equipment, so we advertise that over forty thousand dollars a year. It's approximate, uh, and I put that add that in. You'll see it in their budget, and so we'll have to decide, you know. And they also uh, really need a service truck, which I think is less than fifty thousand dollars. We saw some for last year used ones, but good. For forty three thousand and forty six thousand, but I still needed to to plug some things in the budget here, so I've added fifty thousand dollars to their leasing line item, 
uh, for street department. And you'll see that when we do the street department's budget. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, the service truck is something they, they say they really need, but I suspect they can live without. Uh, the VAC unit, they have not, no way to clear culverts right now to either clear clear the uh, the the, uh, the storm sewers. They have to use the vacuum for that. And then culverts, they, they use the pressure uh, hose uh, to clear that. These units would do both those things, and we don't have that. So um, we have kind of relied on like Parkville to help us at times. Uh, CDOT's helped us a couple times, but we have to depend on the, with the availability of what they can do rather than scheduling it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are with those things. Uh, incidentally, we looked at a we looked at a vacuum truck. They had this whole truck and it had every bell and whistle on it you could possibly imagine, but it was like five hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> you know. And we just, uh, you know, I told those guys because I went to watch to to talk to them at the demo, and I said, "We're not going to buy that." You know that's that's not in our budget. What we want to see is is some choices uh, in terms of what's available. So what I want to opt for is the the least expensive, which is a unit that stands alone by itself and goes on a trailer, or they can make it so it will be, pull onto our hook truck, one of our Mac hook trucks, and so that they can move around with that. And that's the direction we're going to go. So I've seen it for mm -hmm. one hundred sixty thousand that go on a trailer. And that might be an option we consider, we, but we have to get pricing on these things first. So I've, I've, I've ballparked it at $200,000. <clears> Fire department. This one's uh, real interesting. Uh, they, they need a brush truck. They, they've got two brush trucks. One of them's like a 1998 you know, Dodge brush truck. A brush truck is a, it's basically a, a big pickup truck that has some a water thing on it and it has all kinds of equipment. It's basically for going out for brush fires. And, uh, and and it's very versatile. This new one that they're looking at is 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 much heavier duty. It's on an F550 chassis. That may not be meaningless to you, but the average pickup truck's an F150 and then a three quarter tons 250 and then a full ton uh Pickup trucks are 350. This is a 550. It's a big bad boy with all wheel drive. And uh, so this would be, and this would be mostly for use in county. Because right now we have the type three engine that can go out, out on deployment, and we have a, a tactical tender that can go out on deployment. We don't need to be sending brush trucks out on deployment. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The, the nuances that are they can send uh, the type three with three people. And they can send the the uh, the tender with two people, but a brush truck requires four people. Go figure. But that's what the that's what the federal government requires. So brush trucks, you know, cause a problem in terms of deployment, in terms of the number of people you have to send out. Now we get reimbursed for all of it, and they get paid very well. So it's great for the firefighters, you know, and it works out well for us. But. Um, Anyway, that's where we are on that. But here's why I have question marks there. What we're debating at the fire management board is we have about $500,000 sitting in the fire fund balance right now. And we expect that to expand with this summer's revenues. So we're thinking about why don't we just pay for this thing and, and, and mm -hmm. doesn't hit any budgets. Really? So that's, and we're meeting again uh, this Thursday. And that's one of the things on our agenda is to make a decision about that. And I would support that. Why leave that money sitting there? I mean, you know, you, there are always good reasons to have money in reserve, but um, this is a need. Um, so we've added a type three engine this year and another type one engine. So we, we've done a great job for our fire department, but now we're opening a Southern fire station. I mean, the, 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 the possible expansion of this fire department is, um, it's problematic in terms of budgets. <laughs> Is there grant funding available for a brush truck? There's no grant funding available for anything with wheels anymore. Oh. It used to be you could get grants to buy equipment, and anymore you can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get grants for all kinds of protective gear and training and, and a lot of different things, but for actual equipment on wheels, they just all dried up. And then how does it work with the county? <clears throat> Since the drivers would be in the county, not in the city. 
we just do a 70-30 split. But in this case, the fire fund balance, there's no split. It's just, it's money that's it's available money that's to, the, to the fire fund uh, to use, and there's no calculation there's, of split. There's enough money to cover a brush. Yes. And that thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that's the direction we go. We'll see. If we have to put something in the budget, it won't be anywhere near $330,000. Our share, if we say put $100,000 down, but we have uh, $230,000 that we need to finance, um, then our share of that would be 30%, which would be about $75,000 that would go into our budget. It's not nothing, you know, it's still a hit to our budget. Uh, remember, we have $681,000 for the expansion of this budget. And, and some of the things that are that are on the, the bottom, the underneath the line of this are really going to hit us hard. So we'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, we need uh, City Hall. We don't know if we need a boiler or not. But we don't know. Okay. The boiler, uh, anybody, has everybody seen that boiler downstairs <laughs> in the dungeon? <laughs> It is. It's. It's an interesting experience, um, and um, and it's ancient. It's Halloween it month. We should all take a. We should we all take do, a trip down do a there. haunted a haunted basement tour. Well, I I am sure that you were all in that city council meeting where Councilmember Grant got up and walked out of the room to find out who was banging in the. <laughs> if we all knew it was just we the do. first time the boiler fired up, it literally sounds like someone is standing in the lobby with a hammer. <laughs> So, but it, the mayor's right. So what happened last year is the mayor, the, the boiler went up for a little bit. And I'm not kidding. I think the mayor went downstairs and gave it a swift kick and it started up again. Oh, um, no, what that is. <laughs> but it, it, it got, it, uh, it got going again, but we realized. It took that, us about three days to get it. You know, and so it, it was, it was cold enough. We had to send everybody home. They, they could not work here. Yeah. And we don't have. First of all, you can't run the building on space heaters. We blow up the tower, <laughs> um, and it's dangerous. So what we realize is we have a vulnerability. The question really is, it's 100. We got an estimate last year, 115 thousand dollars. The issue really is that thing may putter along for a while, or it may conk out tomorrow. And so that's what we don't know. And and so the best estimate we have is 115 thousand dollars. I will guarantee you, they will find more problems when they start working on the system. <laughs> but it, it's well, you know, the, the, then the weak point becomes all the radiators. If it's another boiler, it doesn't change the fact that we're still using these, you know, 1905 radiators um, to distribute heat throughout City Hall. I don't know if there's a great solution, but it sounds like you need an energy assessment done. <laughs> Actually, yeah. we had one done on City oh, Hall. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know where it is. And they didn't point out the. Oh, oh. Well, I have a question about the boiler. Yeah, please. Um, is that steam heat that we're dealing with? Yes. What about um, <clears throat> converting to hot water heat? You know, that seems like a possibility. They'd have to put in those baseboard hot water mm -hmm. heaters, but the piping is all going up to all the rooms. So that that's an interesting idea. Yeah, maybe that would be a better way to go. Um, I wonder if you could get an estimate on that. Uh, to change to hot water heat with baseboards. Yeah. We may need to do that. I don't know what, I don't know if that changes anything specifically, but it might. We also need to do something with the boiler at the convention center. We don't know if that can be repaired. $60,000 is the replacement cost of that boiler at the convention center. So that's worst case. That's yep. worst case, but also it's worst case because and I don't know where we are on a grant request. Um, we have to go to DOA uh, has, has said they would uh, be well, interested in a grant request. Yeah, and, and I center. well, and I think what we would like to do for that request and having some meetings with some community members is make that request for planning, uh -huh. for having actually hiring an architectural firm spec out the designs, the conceptual designs that C mm -hmm. students are working on. So while I think we will absolutely be doing a December grant request from DOLA, I do not think it will be for just a boiler. I think we're better off maybe requesting a planning grant for that. So, you know, these are things that may end up 
you know, these some of these may end up on the cutting room floor, but we just wanted to put them out there so we can talk about a prioritization. Well, and it's my understanding that we probably couldn't run this building without the boiler during the winter times, right? Either building, correct. Yeah. Yeah, for now, there's no way we could, there's no way we, we, we could work here at City Hall and there's no way we could open up the community center without these boilers. At least the community center being prepared in this one, like I said, <laughs> continuing to work. Getting it figured out. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, since the mayor stepped out for a second, I can, uh, if there's more questions on those, we can talk about those. Those, you see, not every department is a capital request. Those are the capital requests from the departments. And then below the other line are the other financial obligations, the biggies that financial obligations and requests. So, E911 IGA, you know, that's the new dispatch. Uh, this is projections based upon their budget. This is based upon number of calls. Um, over the past three years, they've, they've, they've um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to say prorated, but they, they've looked at the number of calls within the city um, for the fire department, police department, and they projected that this, would, this is our, our share of that cost based upon the number of calls. So we have that IGA. This is their draft budget. That's, I mean, it's a seven hundred and six thousand dollar budget. I think you guys have seen it. Mm -hmm. Huge budget for the E nine one one board. Uh, and then, but this we we're committed to this. So, so so it's clear this this is not optional. We're committed to these numbers in twenty twenty four. The nine one one E nine one one are all. Of them. Well, no, not all. Of them. Uh. Well, the transit authority, you are. We're yeah. committed, you just, committed to that. You just approved that by resolution at the last meeting. The local <clears> will be coming with a budget request. Um, now, the regional housing authority is going to be coming with their budget request. We've heard that a couple times. That's three hundred thousand uh, dollars. That is, you know, two A leftover two A money plus, as the mayor said, question mark question mark. Uh, I can't figure out. But they they have some things in their budget that strike me as absurd in the short term, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because you guys are on the board. Okay. And that is, they want like five hundred thousand dollars for land acquisition. Great. So, the reason for and I've talked to Jack a million times about this. Um, a lot of this boils down to that grant match um, yep. with. Um, Dola mm -hmm. that we just have to meet um, and the reason why that switched up on us is just because of the land uh, differences in what we're using um, and um, now it's a million one plus 500,000 right? Right. So it's a million six but we also lost some of those properties that the county was using that would have been used. Now we're down to two properties yeah and I just saw the blast from the county today mm. that they have made the deal with the hospital. Yes. So uh, we still have that, but the school district one doesn't count towards this because it's not uh, city or county. <clears throat> um, it, oh, basically, it's filling the gap of the necessity so, so you you think the 1.6 million can be applied to one property it would be applied to both i just oh, think right. I, yeah it, okay then um yeah so then what is the match so i think that's kind of where we're sitting at um i think the county's counting the match of and uh, i think uh jackie met with you uh laurie a little bit more about this but um the county's counting their match of the administrative burden that includes like the insurances, the um, <clears throat> budgetary parts of it that I don't quite fully understand. Um, and I need to get the full numbers on we'll probably get tomorrow, to be honest. Um, but a lot of administrative parts of it that so they're looking at in, in kind match based on their administrative burden. So that Basically, I, from my understanding, they are using that to claim a match, and then we are filling in the rest. So their in-kind donation of, well, we're doing the inspections, the audits for the budget, the budget management, et cetera, et cetera. 
which makes sense. It's tradition. I know Summit County does it, and I think Chaffee County does it as well, um, where they manage the Regional Housing Authority's budget portion. Yeah, They're using that as match. <clears throat> and then we're basically filling the rest of the match that is required by DOLA with that 200000 And in addition, we're hiring uh, an additional staff person to do management, which we'll figure out tomorrow what that really looks like. Okay. So um, we don't know what this number is going to be. I think the number should be the same ask. It's just the allocations might differ slightly depending you on... You think the, they want $300,000 in addition to 2A money? No. no, I think it's you get 2A money, subtract whatever over the budget we came um Around three hundred thousand is probably where we're going to end up. Yeah. So two of a money, we're probably going to be putting about one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Right. In uh, this is approximate. <clears throat> we know the seventy thousand. That's yeah. absolute. We don't know about the hundred thousand until we get to the end of the year for for two a. And it. and once we get that outside of budgeted match, so whatever we get over the budget, uh, we'll we can. My assumption, we can subtract that, and that sounds reasonable to me. We can subtract that from the total ask that's being asked, yeah. and then we can come out with the total. So let's just say we're looking at an additional one hundred thirty thousand dollars in burden. Mm -hmm. So you can see what's what's fixing to happen to this budget. Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got we got uh, two hundred thirty thousand dollars here, mm -hmm. another eighty three thousand dollars here, another one hundred thirty thousand dollars. This is eating our six hundred eighty-one thousand dollars alive, especially if you figure about half of that is going towards employee pay. Yeah, uh, we're we got a problem. So. Well, and what I we we have two things. Budgets are pretty simple: revenues and expenses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're looking at we want to do all these things. And we're looking at the property taxes and we say we also want to reduce the mills by X percent. We, you know, so that's why we need to talk to the assessor about what the projections are. If we decide that these are have to haves, then the only other lever is is revenue. So uh I think and you know, the child care coalition reminded me that they made an ask of fifty thousand dollars. JB Housing Trust is going to make an ask. Oh, I forgot about JB Housing Trust. JB Housing Trust and C4. How much are they asking for? 10000 And C4. I, I didn't remember what C4 asked for. asking for 4000 4, I can look that up right now. Okay. Um, you guys are all on the, the Leadville Urban Renewal Authority Board. What they were saying the other night, I pushed back, but they didn't, they weren't listening. Is that uh, they want to? They're talking about approximately ninety-seven thousand dollars, and they want the city to write them a check in January for that amount of money, so they have the money in their account. And I, <clears throat> I'll vote against that. I just will, because as we've never handled it that way in the past. What we've done in the past is we fulfilled our obligation of the local authority during the year, and then we've done it. And, and so we always overspent. We always budgeted. Uh, just as a placeholder, like 25, I think last year we budgeted $30,000. It doesn't matter what the number is. We're going to overspend whatever it is. We could put in a, a probably a, a, a more realistic number, um, but uh, we always end up doing a supplemental at the end of the year. So I just, I have, I, I'm just having a real problem with that approach. I, in fact, I can't. I can't live with writing a $97,000 check. The only other thing that Mayor and I talked about this morning to, to let you know, that's not the only subsidy that we provide for the Leadville Urban Renewal Authority. So while we have a new city attorney, our prior city attorney, Linda Michaud, has agreed to serve as counsel for the Leadville Urban Renewal Authority. So she's going to continue as their attorney. The city actually pays that pursuant to the IGA. We we pay that bill. We pay Linda Michaud's bill. And I've agreed to continue to pay it. She you know, wrote to me to clarify that. So we also pay the legal fees for that. Well, for the Lord. Required to warn me. For the IGA, but I want to say like that doesn't come out of the ninety six thousand dollars that they're asking. Right. So that's an addition well, I to the next step. I believe someone has said that. I'm not There's sure it's said sure. I, it, it's yes, in our IGA, so I don't really yeah, care if it's statutory or not. We yeah. have an obligation. I think Linda put that in writing to us 
a year ago, uh, her interpretation of the statute and what was required, but it is in the IJ. So either way, uh, we, you know, we'll pay her, pay her uh, fees. I mean, so the must haves <laughs> are transit because we can't get out of that, yeah. and the E nine one one, and somewhat the work. Well, the regional regional housing authority. We have signed on to yeah. the regional housing authority, and uh, it's yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know that that was negotiable um, outside of you know no additional past meeting that match grant. Um, so, and that's already we're looking at almost four hundred four hundred thousand uh, of our six hundred thousand. Oh God! <laughs> right, about about four hundred fifty thousand actually. Yeah, and then we're missing from the compensation and reserves. Well, uh, you mean what we have in reserves, or what well, we have in reserves, but we're willing to for twenty twenty four budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We 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 actually can put a line item in in revenue of transfer of funds. We can do that. There so, actually, I think there. There was that. Hold on a second. Where was our revenue sheet? Uh, I saw something in the budget today, and it was a cost line. It was a, it was a, and it was like six hundred and it was over six hundred thousand dollars. I looked at, it, I thought it's a, it was a transfer cost, and I didn't know what that was. Oh, um. Yeah, this is where it's at. Okay, uh, if you go to page three that we were talking about uh, on the revenues, yeah. look at the last line, 9002, transfer from general fund balance. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you, I think Tim's right that we could, but you know, how long can we do that? How, how, you mean, I agree that we may have to do that Yeah. Uh, to get through this year, but all it does is get us through this year. Now, Sure, I hand off to a new mayor. He can have that problem next year. Uh, but I don't know how fair that is. Um, but it, it is, thank you, Tim. That is a real possibility. And, I mean, some another way to look at this, too, is how many of the asks are recurring asks, right? I don't think, well, I don't know if the Regional Housing Authority is going to make the same recurring asks of 300. Oh, it may uh, not, because that's a match against yeah. a, a particular grant. That's a good point. So, uh, But we know E911 is a recurring ask. Of course. Uh, and, and the trans authority is also recurring. That's a three three year projected However, right now. It goes down because oh, it goes down to like forty seven thousand in the second and third years. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know that that's. I mean, honestly, I think that's a good point. Um, that for some of these, you know, non recurring hopefully um, costs, we could totally look at like, could we pay this off a line item reserve? I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me for non-recurring. And then we can go. And I think the Child Care Coalition, I'm not sure, but I think that's non-recurring. I think they're kind of, from my understanding, uh, trying to get their um, coalition situated where they can set up the infrastructure to have child care. Um, I understand what they really want right now is just some sort of sustainable Yeah you know, um, funding that they can count on. Mm, I do okay. get that. I mean, I I, I want to support that. Um, you know, I've attended a lot of their meetings. I, I haven't attended the last couple, but. So I was going to say, just for purposes of timing, it is 8.30. So yeah. one, the reason the mayor put the bottom section on is just so you can see what else is out there. Mm -hmm. This discussion of other funding requests is going to be at your last work session meeting. So you don't have to make those decisions tonight. This is informative. But we would like on the is... guidance on capital needs, uh, if there's any consensus that we um, have a priority for those, please let us know. If, there, if, if there's a preferred priority of something, and like I said, it needs to end up on the cutting room floor. If there's any um, strong feelings from the council as to priorities, please. Tracy, Dana, any thoughts on what we've discussed? I, I just have a quick question, um, and maybe Tracy, you can answer this, but your point about um, looking into hot water heat via baseboard, is that something that would still require a repair of 
the city hall boiler or is that a separate project that would go so the that would cut the, the boiler the, out of the yeah, future the boiler is the primary issue and, and yes. it's not like the boiler is not working we had a problem with it last year it, it works yeah. every single day it's will it crap out on us maybe maybe yeah. what i'd like to do we have uh, brian from mountain uh heating he, he comes and helps us work on this boiler and he, he knows it pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we should get an opinion from him uh, because when, when, it, when it broke down last year, he had to come and replace a part. Actually, I helped him replace it, but <clears throat> I was his assistant, his lovely assistant. And uh, um, he knows a lot about this boiler system and it gets inspected every year um, by the state. So Maybe we should get an opinion from from him about what is the you know what is the need. So let, let me let me work on that in the meantime. <clears throat> Convention center. We don't know if that's a repair or, or replacement. Uh, so uh, if it's a repair, you were saying you thought it was about twenty thousand dollars, right? That was what the estimate was previously. Maybe we can have your your. Um... Brian, look at it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, he's okay. I'll call Brian tomorrow. Yeah. Now he won't come out tomorrow. I assure you. Like last, <laughs> last time I had a, a thing in my house, it took like two or three weeks to get him out there. But he's he's a great guy. So I think the only difference with a hot water boiler is it doesn't require inspection like a steam boiler does. Oh, okay. I bet you're right. It's a little yeah. bit safer. It's a little bit easier to maintain. So, so it would get different altogether. Oh, yeah. yeah. It would be a complete replacement. Okay. And it would be about a fourth the size of the one we have down there. <laughs> yeah. And probably a tenth of the size of the original one that was down there. <laughs> Thank Holy you. Mackerel. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank, thanks for being with us on Zoom. Appreciate it. Let's go get some dinner. You need to send out those documents next time, please. I'm sorry. I, yeah, take I, a lot I, of will, notes. I didn't get these finished until like 5 30, so I apologize. You know. Okay. All right. Any final thoughts? Um, I will not be able to attend on the 24th. Um, so maybe I could. I'll send the documents out to everybody that we're going to be coming on the 24th. Incidentally, Dana, Dana, can you hear me okay? On the 24th, my partner Judy has a, a medical procedure in Colorado Springs. And I hope I'm back here at six o'clock. But if I'm not, go on without me. Okay, I'll be doing it remotely because I'll be right back in this chair on the 24th. Okay, thank you very much. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know that we need a, a lead person to, to these conversations once we get into the budgets, you know, uh, this this we did because there are nuances involved, but in the budgets themselves, uh, the notes, I think, that I put in there will be a good, good enough guys. And I'll still be, I'll still be there. I just don't know if I can be there by six o'clock. That's the problem. But we'll have these numbers before the 24th. Yes. So I can look at that. Actually, I hope I have them. I will formulate within the next week. I'll formulate whatever my concerns are. Thank you. And I'll get that to Lori. Appreciate it. I'm off in October and I don't get much of that. So thank you guys. Good night.